Hey everyone, Cookie here. I have for you a doubles gameplay, and with this video, I want to talk to you about fighting from behind. Every Halo player, no matter how good or bad you are, will face games where they do not have good starts, and they'll face games where they are at an extreme kill deficit, and they don't think they can come back. Uh, this gameplay reflects that very well. Uh, as you can see in the beginning, they get overshield. I end up picking up Snipe, but they have overshield control and on rail. That really is all that matters. Snipe control doesn't really matter that much if they have overshield. So they end up going up 3-0 right off the bat. And things get worse from here on out. Um, at some point in this game, we were down by 7 or 8 kills, but we end up coming back and winning it. So I encourage you to stick around until the end to see it. Um, and this video, I just want to explain to you what it is like fighting from behind and what you should focus on when you are losing by a lot. So the first thing you should do and it's what I'm doing uh, in the game and obviously you know you couldn't exactly know what I'm thinking during the game but you have to get used to how they play. If you're going down by a lot of kills it's for a specific reason. And one of the things I noticed about Natural on the other team is that he always likes to play super passively with Snipe. He'll never rush in, he'll never go in the center map with Snipe, he'll always just say top yellow or top purple. So once you get to know their play styles, then you can know what to expect and you can uh, adapt accordingly. Uh, this is really unlucky here. I drop down, he gets OS slightly before I would have, and he ends up taking me out. So... I noticed Natural always plays very passively. Even when he has the OS, he plays pretty passively with Snipe. So that's something I'm going to remember for the rest of the game. You can see that we're down 5, and I think we get on a little bit more. And I notice his teammate is a little bit more wild. His teammate will run around, um, just constantly rotate the map. And because I know that, it'll help me later in the game, and you'll see where that comes up. Um, another thing I noticed about Natural is that when he is under pressure, he'll try to hit the snipes rather than taking out his BR like he should. So that's another thing. I know that I can challenge him even if his teammate is around because he'll keep out the snipe. Chances are he won't hit his shots and I'll end up cleaning him up. So these are the subtle things that you have to realize. Um, you have to just try to study how the other players play. Um, try to think about what exactly they are doing and what you and your teammate are doing that is leaving you at a, such a deficit. You can see we're down seven kills right now and my teammate ends up trading or he picks up a kill. See natural right now is that snipe spawn. He always stays around the outskirts of the map so I'm just trying to put shots into him hopefully for my teammate to spawn. So I notice my teammate is going uh, to snipe and I come behind this maniac guy Overshield is up, and my teammate luckily takes that guy out, and we get overshield control. So we're five down with overshield control, um, and that's extremely important when you're trying to come back. If there is a power weapon like the overshield on a map, and if you've ever played rail, especially on doubles, you'll know that the overshield is the most important thing on rail uh, by far. The snipe is like nothing compared to how important the overshield is. So, uh, if you are going down and they happen to get the first two overshields like they did, we ended up getting the third. So what you have to do is time OS's. You have to start timing weapons. Even if they get the overshield, it doesn't mean that you can't time it. You just have to know when they pick it up and know when the next overshield will spawn. The overshields on rail spawn every minute and a half. So about 11.55, right when the game starts, it's taken. Next one, it spawns at 10.25. The next one, 8.55. The next one, 7.25. The next one, 5.55, 4.25, etc. And the whole 25 and 55 thing is if you pick it up exactly as it spawns. Chances are on the, on the second, third, and fourth OVs, um, you'll have to wait a few more seconds for the OV to spawn because people don't normally pick it up right when it spawns. So as you can see right now, we're on a little bit of a comeback. And it's just because we're keeping the snipe away from natural and we're making sure that we get OS control. 
you'll notice that whenever Natural and his teammate are, whenever they are on purple ramp or yellow ramp or top purple or top yellow, um, my teammate and I didn't really push. We just try to keep top control, keep teleporter control, because that is extremely important when the OS comes up. The closer you are to it, the better. So especially on rail, if you're going to come back, not only do you first have to know their play styles so you can adapt, you have to get the overshields, time the weapons, um, and then the third tip is to just put yourself in better positions on the map. In the beginning, we were just kind of carelessly rushing, kind of getting sniped, trying to challenge them, but now we're just kind of holding our ground and we're trying to coordinate our pushes. So we ended up being down four, but... I call out to my teammate that I got natural really weak. I'm putting shots in the top yellow. So hopefully my teammate rushes and there he is. So he's going top yellow and I should go bottom snipe. This is a perfect example right here. I know, even though there are two of them, I know that I can challenge them. The reason I do that is because I know natural will not pull out his BR. If natural pulled out his BR, he probably would have killed me there. But since I studied his playstyle, I know that he wouldn't pull out his BR, he didn't, and I ended up getting two kills. So I get snipe control, I end up getting a nice double. And we are not quite caught up yet, but my teammate is lucky to secure the next OS, and I end up sniping another guy. So as you can see, we are pretty much in control right now. We're working well as a team, we're staying on top. You never want to sacrifice your height advantage pretty much on any map unless you know you unless you want to do a push like up snipe ramp. So I know my teammate has him weak, I end up cleaning him up. And one of the best tips for coming back is like beyond all other tips, beyond timing weapons and all the other things I've said, is just Usually when you go down, it's because you're getting, you and your teammate are offset on your spawns. So you would rush in and get double teamed and die, and then your teammate, when you are dead, would rush in and get double teamed and then die. Then you spawn, you get double teamed, die, you know, the cycle repeats. So in order to avoid that, what you want to do is just wait till your teammate spawns. Like if you die, tell your teammate to wait for you and vice versa and always just stick to your teammate. You spawn, run to your teammate right away. Usually the only reason people uh, go down at such deficits are that they're just not sticking together uh, or they're just not controlling the power weapons well. But um, so that's just the tip that you know beyond all else you should do. So I call out that they both snipe spawn right here and you can see that the game is close all the way up until the end. My teammate ends up getting OS. I call out the guy going top yellow ramp. My teammate rushes in snipe, so I know I want to go top yellow and put in shots. I get the snipe weak. He ends up sniping me once. I know I don't have to push since my teammate has overshield. And I know I can just let him uh, get the last two kills. That's another um, thing you have to do in order to come back. You have to trust your teammates. If your teammate picks up overshield, you know that all all you really have to do is put shots in and even if you get weak you can just hide because you have to trust that your teammate will get a single or a double kill and the game wraps up right here uh, this maniac guy pushes out a little bit too far and I end up picking him off so as you can see we won 30 to 25 I had 17 kills uh, there was a point in that game where we were down seven kills that was the biggest deficit and we ended up winning by five. So all of the tips I gave you, just try to remember. Um, I hope you enjoyed the gameplay. I have more to come, especially more doubles gameplays. I recently got my 50 in that, so you should be expecting more gameplays from doubles. And uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you want. And more gameplays to come, as always. See you later.